Sergio, we merge his pull request on the auth to branch, but there is still some work. Um, he's no more on vacation, so can't work as much as before on that. Is Sergio here? Um, I don't think so. But that's a work in progress. Uh, setup screen. I showed you the setup screen, I think. And uh, then Nick working on the recipes. Uh, setup screen, setup screen. Refactoring background thread. Then I worked on the recipes branch too. Fixing bugs, fixing bugs. Um, same thing, then I updated all the packages to the RTM version. They were still doing a dash star, uh, which was unnecessary. We can specify the version, it makes the um, package restore faster. Um, reorganizing recipes, this is some refactoring on the recipes. Recipes, no, setup screen with better things. Uh, I implemented a theme step so we can define the theme during the setup recipe. I will show you. Um, I had some issues with the event bus and how the um, events are registered with the DI, but that's fixed now. Uh, I added support for the home page and also a recipe step to be able to set the home page from the recipe. I will show it to you and Sipke will comment on the implementation. Um, because he's the owner of the iHome page service in Orchard One. Um, let's see. So I reverted to to that dependency for JSON Orchard Security. It's to be restored. Might take a long time, but it will run in the background. Yes, it will take some time. Some days I'll just do that, restore packages. Um, so that's it. Uh, in the meantime, questions on Orchard 2 before I show you the status? No questions. Topics. Harvest. Harvest. So what do you have to say about harvest? Okay, harvest. So um, George and Sipke and I have been exchanging some emails string <coughs> you, well I've been suggesting things I didn't see any opposition from them or validation um, so I was uh, so there is there are two efforts going on uh, the Miami effort and the Newcastle effort the Miami effort gets more um, weight because Sipke and uh, George are uh, pushing on this one and it's also the US uh, turn um, one of the issues with the Miami effort is um, the attendance and the impact that uh, uh, that uh, the Zika virus could have on the attendance because even the local newspaper discouraged people from going to the Miami Beach because of the Zika, Zika virus or some neighborhoods in Miami. Uh, yes, Rob, I vote Miami and I'm from Newcastle. Okay. Would you take your wife and family to Miami? Okay. Um, so I'm, um, I'm afraid that should be that could be a, an impact on the attendance, uh, and um, and the, there is a risk that it's worth in the next month 
So we don't know what will what what stage it will be in the next month, and uh, and uh, we can't afford to cancel anything. And uh, I, I'm I'm a little bit scared of that. Um, uh, so um, George was suggesting other cities, or it could be around that. Sipke was suggesting Orlando, but it might be the same issue. I don't know. So George was also pro proposing the uh, New Orleans. Uh, which he says it's uh, as expensive as Miami, but yeah, it's close enough and uh, uh, it's also nice for um, events. Um, there is no Zika virus in uh, Newcastle, <laughs> but it's more rainy also. Um, Another option is to create smaller events. If we know that there will be less attendance, let's make a smaller event and and maybe why not two events smaller, like one small in Newcastle and one small in Miami. Uh, we don't expect many Europeans to go to Miami. We don't expect many uh, uh, North Americans to go to Newcastle. So it's not like eating each other's attendance. A little bit, but not that much. Uh, for instance, I don't think I'm taking Bertrand. I don't think Bertrand will go to Newcastle if he goes to Miami, right? What's the point? If they are like a few months apart, I'm not sure. Um, so there are, the options are still open. Uh, we haven't decided anything, so feel free to say anything that you think. Yeah, so George says after October it goes up the price. Yeah, the pricing, I mean, the, the high season in Miami starts in November, and that's when everyone from Europe and all the snowbirds come. I don't know how much it will go up. It may have been the hotels just trying to get me to book now, but it may get a little bit more expensive. Flights will get a little bit more expensive. Uh, that being said, the Miami tourist industry is down, I think, this year from last year. So maybe we'll get lucky. I can find out if you guys want to move it. Um, but to Sebastian's point, uh, Zika virus is overblown as it may be, you know, will possibly affect attendance. It was an issue with the Olympics. Um, I went to the Olympics, so I already have Zika virus. Uh, I'm, going to my, I'm going to Miami for Thanksgiving, so if I don't have it now, I might get it then. But uh, I'm not the demographic that's confirmed, concerned about this. So, yeah, I'm, I'm concerned uh, about the impact it could have on the attendees, on the number of mm -hmm. attendees. Like, if we say it's 20% less people, 20% for us is huge. Like, it's from 50 to or 60 to 50. Well, and, and and to be honest, if Zika's in Florida, it will be in New Orleans within a couple of months. I mean, it's it's already reported in almost every state. It's yeah. just, so uh, when I uh, talked about it with uh, George, I sent him a, a just a newspaper, a local newspaper link. Uh, about that, and yeah, the issue was that even locally, the newspaper said the mayor said, "Don't visit Miami if you don't have to visit Miami." The mayor was saying, "No, it's not." It was, no, it's not. You is, read the article. I, I I have read the article, and I have also been to lived in Miami. I've been there. Remember, this is Miami. Everything's very dramatic. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, don't I, don't if you're pregnant, don't go to Miami Beach, and if you don't have to come to Miami. Postpone your no. trip. Don't go to Hialeah. I think is what they're really saying. There are no mosquitoes. There are almost no mosquitoes at Miami Beach. Um, but no, I, I, look, I look even even you know if the mayor of the city is telling you not to come, people will read that. I understand that from an attendance perspective. Um, Boston is a very expensive conference city. I've been to conferences there. I mean, if cost is an issue, if cost isn't an issue, then we can go wherever. Um, but so another solution is to postpone, like after December to see how it's going on. Uh, Redmond. Redmond, we tried once. I don't think we'll try it twice. It was not the best um, harvest. People like to come to Microsoft, but apart from Microsoft, there was nothing to do. So it was uh, the opposite of Alicante in terms of uh, activity. I mean, there's Washington D.C. There's yeah, uh, there are, yeah. So there are many other options, and uh, just remember why we chose Miami at first for close to the beach, like holiday destination, 
so people can can use this occasion to also take some vacation and and go to the conference. Um, also, um, we want to try to have a workshop on the Sunday before for people to get um, uh, training on our trade specific topics. Um, but that's independent. So yeah, we need still a, a, a sexy destination in terms of uh, travel destination. Uh, any code. Yeah, you, you suggested uh, California again, uh, George, also in the email. That yeah. could be an option. It's always it's sunny option. in California. <laughs> it's always sunny here. I, I know it's far for Europeans, so that's the only reason. And we've already done it here once. That was the reason I, I figured we maybe wouldn't be ready to consider it again, but it's always an option. And I like the East Coast because it's an opportunity for Europeans to come. It's easier. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I don't know. Well, so I guess the requirements are we want to make it more of a vacation destination so that people are yep. encouraged to come, bring their families. Uh, good weather is nice, but maybe not necessary. Although bad weather will mean no mosquitoes. So Washington in February, <laughs> no mosquitoes. Well, Miami also in February is nice, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it goes down to like the 70s. I, there are some. You actually will get some cold days in Miami during the winter. I, for a couple of years, whenever I would go there, I would bring the northeast weather with me. My father would joke the day I left, it went back up to 75, and it was a beach day again. Um, so I mean, but but again, booking everything in that. I mean, I guess after Art Basel is is in December that it gets a little bit better. Uh, yeah, but Art uh, Basel is a huge thing that uh, hotel rates just go through the roof. Um. Yes, yeah, so is there a postpone in Miami just to uh, see how it evolves and the fears uh, disappear and uh, or yeah, more touristic uh, city or yeah, Rob is suggesting New York uh, that fixes the, the beach issue because even if it's New York, I mean, people have things to do and visit so People oh, will, yeah. will come because New York, man. Like from Europe, yes, I've never been to. If if you have never been to to New York, you will still come. It's very easy to get to from pretty much everywhere. I can yeah. I can do some investigation. I have some friends that live in. I will be there on Thursday. So the only issue is price and um, and weather. Like in winter, no way. It's too risky. I mean, with there are always a, a storm, a, a snowstorm in winters at some point and. The airport closes and happened Napa. to me. <laughs> <laughs> happened to you? Yep, on the th on the thirtieth of uh, January, on the yeah, on the, on the New Year's Eve, I spent the night there. <laughs> uh, oh, it was nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, when another option, and no mosquitoes in New York. Not in the winter. Uh, in the summer, yes, very hardy ones. Yeah, I like to try East Coast if possible because if we do one event, then do it on East Coast for Europeans, so it's easier for them to join. Uh, yeah, Vegas is fun, but it's also far. Um, and Vegas in the winter is not warm, by the way. Uh, it, it gets quite cold there. It's like yeah. It, it's a desert. I get warm, but also very cold at night. Okay, so um, yeah, I think we'll investigate some of the options, states, and uh, but yeah, the other option was to do two small events, and then it could be on the west coast and a smaller event like targeting 30, 40 people max, and do another one in Europe, close like in in a few months apart. Uh, same thing, targeting 30, 40 uh, people max. Uh, so splitting the budget in two. Uh, might be also easier to find rooms and cheaper rooms. Uh, so that's another option. I don't know what people think. And uh, I don't, I will not expect people to come to both conferences. 
uh, European staying in Europe and so the content could be almost the same. I'm not sure it also makes sense to have the same content but it's also a way to um, uh, to socialize and, and, and meet people so that would be fine. The content will definitely be somehow different because it's not the same speakers mostly but uh, that would be an option. It, it will allow many more Europeans to join our, uh, the conference this year too. I don't know what people think. I'm open to anything. So, so Therese say, uh, says one one conference is better. Rob says what two conferences better? <laughs> one, okay. So people don't want to. Splitting is worse than Zika. Okay. Well, the issue with Zika is that if we organize for 70, 80, and in the end we are 40, that's an issue because we pay more for nothing. So the budget is an issue. Complementary uh, vials of mosquito repellent as you sign in. And, and also, when you say to people, come to the conference, will be 80, and they join and they are only 40, it's different in terms of. Uh, uh, of uh, socializing. Uh, yep. So, um, yeah, if we target um, February, around February, uh, um, New York is an option, Miami is an option, so we could even say, um, we could even choose if Miami is still an issue, okay, let's fall back to New York and uh, and done and done I mean it's decided we could we could do something like this if we say it's East Coast Miami slash New York if we decide around February then we can define a, a deadline to decide um, and go for and go with it I think if Zika is a concern then it's probably smart to wait yeah, I, I really prefer Miami because of the location and the, the beach, personally, but uh, I mean New York is not bad either, uh, but I prefer when it's warm than cold and rainy, which it could be in New York in February. Oh, it will definitely be cold in New York in February. <laughs> cold, but it could also be rainy, uh, maybe, be well, snowy, snowy. Snowy, yes, yeah. yeah, snowy, icy. Um. Uh, so if we were to pick a date, a provisional date in the beginning of next year, um, I would to, to tell these people to try to get pricing and other availability, what date should we pick? February? We should look also for the calendar, um, school calendar, if there is a way to somehow match or be linked to a school calendar, whatever region it is in the States or Europe, that could help. I don't know. There's President's Day in February, which is usually a holiday. Something like, yeah, even something like this, so we could, um, yeah. That okay, might, that let me, this. I'll find out, I'll, I'll contact the hotels I'm working with and find out, you know, for weeks in February what the pricing is and see if it changes. And uh, Rob will take his whole family, apparently, is ready for that, Rob K. <laughs> okay. Well, we could go to New York and then go to Miami, they're only three hours away by plane. And as Rob Arred is, uh, is suggesting, if we go to to Miami, then you can finish it on the Bermuda Islands. So, I recommend Grand Cayman. It's beautiful. Okay. Oh, we could do it on an island. Like, well, it's one hour flight more than Miami or something like this. But yeah, that's doable. Well, Grand Cayman will be beautiful in February. I can tell you that much. Okay. Um, <laughs> so that was the topic, Sipke. Uh, so I will write it in notes. So wait to see how Miami evolves. Then fall back to New York. Um, one conference, so people don't like the idea of having two small conferences. Um, okay, let me start my demo. 
if it works. No, not yet. No. Too fast. Ah, no, that's good. I deleted the talent because I don't. Ah. Okay, stop play. Uh, about tweets, 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 tweets. I tweeted um, last week. Let me show you. I found it by chance. Uh, I tweeted with the Orchard CMS account. It's slow because I'm sharing the screen. It's slow. So Orchard CMS, Orchard CMS, Orchard CMS. Is it there? This one. Yeah, company, I didn't know about them. Mainbit.com. Uh, there is the same thing in Russian, maybe that uh, are you. And they have a bunch of websites, which are really nice. Uh, with Orchard. This one. This one, I think, is a photography website. And this one, yeah, nice ones. Quite big and nice design. Is it flash? I don't know what it means, but it worked. So just mentioning this one, main bit. So they're doing a lot of, lots of websites on Orchard. Is anyone in the meeting related to them? Oh, I think you have already showed this. Oh, no, maybe you were talking about it during the last uh, harvest. It was not yet finished. Okay, so mentioning this one, um, for those who don't, so I think nine, net nine P something like that. So user, a GitHub username is one of the developers from there, if you know this username. So the setup, ah oh no, this is not the setup, so this is the tenant already created, so I forgot to delete it. I want to show you the setup with the recipe. So in the setup now, like in Orchard 1, we have the recipes file, so this is what uh, Nick has done. So there is a recipe module which will need some UI, but in the recipes folder of the setup here there is a core recipe. Uh, you saw it I think last week. A feature to enable the features. So it's part of the recipe to say which features to enable. Uh, then there is another step which is themes. And now because uh, in order to we can define the two themes we have for the admin size, admin side, the admin, and for the front end the theme, okay, so it's part of the setup now, we don't have to go to the specific controller to define the values at, the, at first, and also, Sipke, are you still here with us? I'm here. Cool. So, there is a step called settings, okay, which lets you define the site settings, as in iSite, like in Orchard 1, okay, site name, site source, super user, whatever, culture. So everything here can be defined from the recipe, which I think is nice, right? Um, I'm not sure we had that from uh, Orchard 1, actually. Um, and one of the properties now in Orchard 2 is called home route, okay? Which, you guess, is how the site should behave with the home page. What is the home page? A route value dictionary. So now, for instance, in my example, because I enabled the Orchard demo, I want uh, one of the pages from the Orchard demo to be the home page. So it just says uh, Orchard demo home controller index page, which will be mapped automatically on the slash uh, on the home page, because 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 there is a home page route which is um, registered automatically with all the routes. 
that will uh, look into the site settings and ask for what is the current home page, controller uh, action, and render this thing as the home page uh, match. Um, how it will work with alias is just an auto route, is just all the pages will have the alias, the canonical alias. Okay? But we will still have the checkbox from the home page settings to say, oh, this one is a home page. So when it will be rendered in URLs, it will be rendered as the slash home page, and the slash home page will point to this specific uh, content item. But anything can be a home page. It can be from any module, not even not just something which has the auto route. It can be any anything. Um, so it can be set inside the recipe, or there will be also a, a setting, uh, a page setting, if we want to define any other um, route. And uh, to get then the home page, you just resolve the site, I site, so get site settings, and you just render the URL for the home page route from the site settings. So that should be pretty simple, right? Yeah, th so the, diff the main difference with uh, uh, the current implementation in Orchard 1 is that <clears throat> we use uh, the alias module to uh, uh, map uh, the, the, the root slash with a mm -hmm. uh, yes. <clears throat> with route values, and here it's more formalized in the in the form of a property on iSite service or iSite. Yep. Yep, this is ap I like it. approximately what you try to do with the I homepage service uh, after mm -hmm. that in Orchard, Orchard One, so which makes sense. The homepage yeah, is yeah, this is very different. clean, and I like I like the names that you g uh, gave to home route instead of homepage alias service or something like it. Yeah, and um, <laughs> so it doesn't work because I want to do the demo. It doesn't work. Why did I break? I don't know. This is so sad. Orchard Sitting Services. One, yes, just trying this way in case it works. Uh, Orchard settings is a module. Orchard settings is a module, and the recipe says, Oh, it's not enabled. Maybe that's why. I didn't even reach the recipe, I think. Oh! Maybe because of the home page. Okay, I think that's the issue. Oh, no, ultra settings are already different. Yes. Yep, that's because. Um, because, yep. Ah, man. I broke everything with my thing. That's so sad. It was working. Well, the idea is that because of the recipe now, um, when you set up, Automatically, you get the correct themes, and you are on the home page, which was the demo home page, and um, and that works. The rest still works. That was the demo. Sorry, and I also wanted to show the <laughs> drag and drop, which I fixed, but uh, it will be for next time. Well, sorry. Questions, topics, demos. We have some more time. Release. Release, release. So, um, we could do a small release because we don't see uh, the big one coming in the near term. So, this one was released not 
Yeah, so if I go to releases, 1.10.1 was released on May 11, uh, so it's been five, uh, May, 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 four months. Uh, what do we have on the issues right now? <clears throat> my stones, my stones, 1.10.1. One, which is sure to be fixed. So one ten one oh closed. We have oh no no. One ten one is what is done. Then we need milestones. One ten x. One ten x and uh, closed. So this is what has been fixed for. Some of them should be in. One ten one. Can I say after a specific date? No. Can I order by US? Okay. Um, so a bunch of fixes. June, 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 June. Close May, 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 June, May. Let's say after. Yeah, that's weird. It's not the close date, it's when they were created. That's why. Yeah, so a bunch of fixes to ship, so we could think about shipping a new version. There is no urgent thing because there was no urgent bug, but uh, like this one, you see, uh, but maybe it was a small regression at some point which was fixed again after. Um, yeah, small fixes. Admin theme, admin theme. I talked about it earlier. Um, so um, the current state, the last last thing that uh, Jasmine was talking about during for the admin theme was the right to left um, compatibility. So we supported that in Orchard one with the current theme. The issue with the new theme is that uh, now there need to be some work done to make it also right to left compatible. Um, so take into account the class when the language is right to left. Uh, and because uh, maybe the main issue will be the menu. Uh, so that's some work to do. So it depends on available time from Jasper or, Jasper or anyone who is interested in right to left and the new admin menu to help but uh, I don't think so, Teres. You're interested in right to left. Because Greek is Greek, but left to right. So you could, yeah, what you can do with the theme, it's a branch with it, which is merge, um, which merges also dev branch. So you can already use it. And there should not be any obvious bugs, or you should try it and file the bugs for that. Um, I think Jasmine is also trying to look at exist other existing modules to see what is broken and some recommendations for people to migrate their module. Um, yeah, so just you can try the and maybe already yep, um, branches. Yes, anyone I think I, I told Jasmine anyone should try the admin theme uh, to find some bugs. Now it's in a state that um, is there a tag for that? Issues, labels. Admin. Yeah, there's a uh, label called admin theme. Not admin. Just admin. Admin. So 13 open bugs. Maybe some of them are already done. Uh, like Gravatar, I think there is more Gravatar, right? Or oh, it has been updated. Uh, but this one is the, the main one, the until support. Um, yeah, I think some of them should be closed because they're old. Or they're not related to the admin team, the new one. Yep. Yep, so feel free to, to try that. And please try it. So feel free, please try it.
questions? Um, jumping topics. Um, so this morning on Gitter, someone asks for a release date for Orchard 2, same answer, there is no release date, but we have a roadmap, just to remind you, and the roadmap now is um, the first print, pre-alpha, current sprint. We are reaching the, the end, so this morning I was working on uh, polishing all the UI, like I, I know the... Um, the user's UI was not finished, I had asked for some help, but nobody uh, jumped on it, so I'm trying to finish this uh, this UI, meaning listing all the users, filtering the users, editing the roles, the permissions, things like that, because all the logic is there, but we need the UI. So I'm working on that. Uh, then I will look on to this, so I'm working on the admin theme, guidelines, tree navigation, to finish it, polish it, and uh, uh, this way anyone can build modules. Uh, next step, and, and look at it, we have pretty much what we need. Uh, recipes are there, background tasks, uh, placement files, but well, they can use some more work uh, each independently, but we have the main features. Different tasks, um, we could run a blog with that, uh, we have the list module, so that will be interesting to see if we can host a blog. Um, um, content items are there, content types management is there, um, the event bus, navigation, shapes and shape cache, so mostly everything is there. Uh, then the next step will be to implement um, bigger modules, like modules with more more value, added value on the, on the content management and on the user. Um, I did a split like, okay, let's do different steps, different uh, uh, sprints, but uh, we, we could rearrange that. For instance, um, yesterday I was working and, not working, but studying how to do the the projections module, because this is something that, uh, that will impact a lot of websites, and, uh, and if it's there early, it's good, I think. Uh, so the projection, and, I, and it's also technically challenging, because projections will need the, the relationship with SQL, and we have yes SQL now, so I was wondering how to, to make it happen, and um, I think I have some uh, interesting ideas. Um, let me show you what notes I took. Um, yeah, so just dumping all the ideas, um, and um, yeah, looking at uh, RavenDB uh, because it's also an, an handling uh, dynamic indexes, but it's just a quick note. Um, Drupal, what they, they have done, so I looked again at their module to see what they do with the views module, interesting. Uh, and then uh, I came with this idea. So the idea will be to have um, some services to do I call content analyzer. The idea will be that the content analyzer is just to extract um, pieces of data from the, the content items. Like we will have content analyzer for the text, for the fields, all of the fields like boolean fields, text fields, body fields, uh, anything, and also for the parts like body part, give me your content, and it will give the body and some metadata about the body, how to handle the body, like we need to remove the tags, need to be tokenized, and things like this. So it's just about extracting data and metadata about the content items, okay? And then um, there would be indexers, like we could have a SQL indexer that will project all the data uh, into tables to be able to query on that. Or we could have the Lucene indexer to project all data onto Lucene documents. So today, this part is hard-coded in the projection, and this part is already there in Orchard 1, but hard-coded in the Lucene uh, module. And if we could extract the logic to extract the data, then we could reuse the data to index it anywhere. Okay, so there will be a SQL indexer and the Lucene indexer, because they use the same, they need to use the same uh, uh, services to extract data. And today, it's hard-coded in the text fields to do that. And then on top of that, we could have query providers. Query, pro query providers um, will be a SQL query provider. So the idea of a query provider is that you create a query in whatever language it is, or UI it is, and then it returns to you a list of document IDs. 
Okay, so a SQL query provider could uh, get um, a SQL query to return document uh, IDs, but using also the either the existing SQL tables that we have for each, every module, and also from the SQL indexing uh, services that will create all the indexes for all the, the fields and data. Okay, uh, we could have a search query provider to do a query based on the search indexes. So if you want to do a projection, you could select which query provider you want. Oh, I want to do a query from the SQL database. I want to do a query from my search index. I want to do a query from uh, query index query, I don't care, from the user. So you could have a user query provider because the user is not a content item. So it won't work with the content uh, indexer. It won't work with the listen index. But you could have a query provider where you, that provides a UI to say list users and you can filter. And uh, it will return the document IDs of the user so that we can render the users if we want. And we could imagine, it's stupid, but we could, okay, let's do a taxonomy query provider or any query provider that you want to, to return documents from. So it will be extensible in terms of services and UI. Um, and then a projection defines what query from what query provider and again what layout. So the layout will be independent from the query provider because it just gets an, a list of document IDs and just renders the document. Document being content or document, any document. A user is a document. Roles could be documents. So in the end, um, um, that's what I think it should be should be done with uh, the new architecture. That's the current state of the projection. Uh, so just thinking um, before uh, we start working on that, just to to fix the potential issues that we could have with that. Um, but the next big thing is polishing the, the sprint and, and this module to to let people start working on uh, bigger modules uh, and just porting them from module one. Okay. Yes. No questions, no comments. Okay. Well, we can uh, end it now if there is no more questions. Good. Okay, charge is good. Well, it's looking good. It's getting closer and closer. Yeah, um, yeah I will host uh, Sipke's blog. Oh, no, should too. We'll be happy. Um, okay, well, then done. Thanks, everyone. See you Thank on you. Thursday.